Today I want to show you how to create the front end of a 5 star rating system using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now let me quick explain what we see on the screen. On the left we have three rating groups. We will assume that each rating group belongs to a product. This means that when we click on a star we are rating a product and we are going to store the product's ID and number of stars in the browser's local storage. Let's see it in action. I'm going to rate the first product and I'm going to give it 3 stars. By doing so, we see an entry in the local storage. We see a key named Rating. Let's click on it. We see that the Rating key holds an array and inside the array we have an object which has a Product ID property and a Stars property. In our case, we rate the product with ID 39 and we give it 3 stars. Let's rate the other two products as well. Let's give the second product 4 stars. We see that a new object is added in the rating array which has a product ID of 40 and 4 stars. And last, let's give the third product 2 stars. Again we see that another object is added in the rating array containing the corresponding values. Another thing is that we cannot rate the same product twice. Even if the user leaves the page and comes back another time, the ratings that he made will be still here. I will reload the page so you can see it. And we see that the ratings are still here. But if I delete the data from the local storage and I reload the page, the ratings are gone. And that's it. This is what we are going to create. So let's close the browser and let's code. I will create a div element and I'm going to give it a class of ratings wrapper. This is the parent element that will hold the rating group. Inside the ratings wrapper element, I will create another div element with a class of rating. Also, I will add a dataset attribute with a name of product ID and give it a random value of 39. Next, I will add a span element and inside I will have the HTML code to display a star. Now, the span element has also a dataset attribute named rating, which has a value of 5. This is going to be the fifth star. We are going to structure the span elements in a descending order because we are going to reverse them in the CSS file to make the hover effect to work. You will see when we get there. Now let's add the remaining stars and change the data rating values. This is all the HTML code that we need for now. Now let's go to the CSS file to style our rating group. I will start with a ratings wrapper element. I will give it a border. I will set the display property to inline block. This way the element's width will be as wide as its content and I will set also some margin and padding. Next I will set the display property of the ratings div element to flex. This way there will be there will be no gap between the stars. Next I will target all span elements. I will display the cursor to a pointer. I will add a transition effect on the color and the transform property. And I will set the font size to 50 pixels. Next I will set the hover effect on the span element. I will set the color to orange and I will use the transform property to set the scale value to 1.3. Let's hover over the stars. And so far so good. Next I will target any span element that comes after the one that we hover on. And I will set the color to orange. Let's hover over the stars again. The CSS code is working. But this is not the effect that I want. I want to target the preceding stars and change the color. But there is not such an option in CSS. So I will go to the ratings rule and I will reverse the order of the span elements. I will set the flex direction to row reverse. Let's see now what we have. Nice. The hover effect works the way we want. Now let's go to the index file to create two more rating groups and then we will write the JavaScript code. I will duplicate the whole element and I will give it a product ID of let's say 12. 
and to the third rating group I will give a product ID of 22. Let's reload the browser to see our elements. The hover effect is working fine. Now let's go to write the JavaScript code. The first thing that I will do is to access all span elements and, and store them in, a, in the stars variable. Next I will target all div elements with a class of ratings and I will store them in the products variable. Remember that we are assuming that every rating group belongs to a product. Next I will create an empty array named ratings. We are going to use this array to store the data in the local storage. Next I'm gonna loop through the stars and I will add an on-click event listener to each of them. Now every time we click on a star, a function will run and we will add a dataset attribute named data clicked with a value of true to the star that we clicked on. By doing this, we will have a reference point if a star is clicked or not. Let's open the developer tools to see this in action. I will expand the first rating group so we can see the span elements and I will go in the browser and click on the third star of the first rating group. If you look in the dev tools, you will see that the span element with a data rating value of 3 has now a data clicked attribute. Now we can use the data clicked attribute not only in the JavaScript file as a reference point, but also in the CSS file. Let's see what I mean. In the CSS file, I will write two more rules. In the first rule, I will target all span elements with a data clicked attribute and I will set the color to orange. Let's reload the page to see this in action. Let's click on the third star, the fourth star and on the second star. We see that the color stayed orange. Now let's change the color also of the preceding stars. I will do the same thing as we did with the hover effect. I will target all span elements that comes after the one we click and I will change the color to orange. Let's click again on our rating stars. And very nice. This is exactly what we want. Now let's continue with the JavaScript code. Ok, now I need to fetch the data rating value of the star that we clicked and the product ID of the rating group that the star belongs. So I will create a variable named rating and I will store in that variable the data rating attributes value. If we click on the third star, the rating variable will hold the value of 3. Next I will fetch the product ID in which the clicked star belongs to and I will store it in the product variable. Now let's console that log the rating and the product ID variables to see if we got it right. Let's open the dev tools and click on the console tab. Let's reload the page and rate the first product with 3 stars. We see in the console the number of stars which is 3 and the product's ID which is 39. Let's check the other two rating groups as well. Nice, so far everything is working as supposed to. Now let's continue with the JavaScript code. I will create an object named data that will hold the rating value and the product ID. Next I will insert the data object in the empty ratings array and I will store it in the local storage. Let's open one more time the dev tools to have a visual on the local storage and give the first product 3 stars. Looking in the local storage we see the rating key which holds our rating data. Nice. Let's rate the other two products as well. So far so good. But what happens if I continue to rate the products? We see that every time we click on a star we are creating a new object that gets stored in the local storage. That is not what we want. I don't want to rate a product twice. So let's clear the local storage and let's fix it. I will go to the top of the function and I will create a variable named children in which I will store all span elements that belongs to the rating group that we clicked on. Next I will loop through the children. But first let me fix a typo in the above line. Let's change the dot to a semicolon. Now inside the loop I will have an if statement and I will check every span element for a data clicked attribute. If this is true I will return false. 
and the function stops here. This will prevent us to rate the same product twice. Now let's reload the page and check it out. Let's open the DevTools again. I'm going to click once on each rating group. So far so good. Now I will try to rate the products twice. And nothing is happening. Nice, exactly what I want. Now that we have seen how to store the data in the local storage, let's see how we can fetch and apply them on the rating groups so when we reload the page we don't lose the ratings that we made. Let's see how we do this. First of all I will check with an if statement if there is a rating key in the local storage. If this is true I will fetch the data and I will store them in the ratings array. Next I will loop through the ratings array. Now the logic here goes like this. I will fetch every product ID from the local storage and I will find the same product ID in the HTML page. But to do so I need a second loop so I can access every product ID from the page. We know that the products array holds every rating group from the page. Now inside the second loop I will write an if statement and I will find the matching product IDs. The logic inside the if statement goes like this. Let me write the line of code first and then explain it. Now if there is a match I will grab all span elements that belongs to that rating group by saying product.children. But I have to reverse them. Remember that the span elements in the HTML file are in a reverse order. So I will use the reverse method. But in order the reverse method to work, I have to convert the HTML collection that the children property returns to an array. And I will store the reverse array in the reverse stars variable. I hope it makes sense. Next I will fetch the number of stars that we gave to the product and I will say minus 1. This will give me the index of the rated star. We are doing so because JavaScript arrays are zero based. And last I will use the index on the reversed stars array to target the span element and add a data clicked attribute. And now the CSS code will take over and will fill the stars in each rated product every time I reload the page. So let's reload the page to see if it works. Nice, our ratings are still here. And that's all for today guys. We created the front end of a rating system, at least how I came up with that solution. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you like, see you in the next one.